All right, let's try this one. 3x squared plus 20x minus 7. The first thing I check is can I factor anything out of all three terms? No. no. The answer is no, absolutely not. Number two, can I determine the leading coefficients of the factors? Well, it happens to be the same uh, as the last one. one. Nope. Uh, so it happens to be the same as the last one, um, which was, I think, Three Wait, one. leading coefficients, right? 3x and 1x, okay? Noting that that gives me, if I multiply those back together, it would give me 3x squared. Next, can I determine the signs in each factor? Well, I've got a minus 7 at the end. So I know that my signs have either got to be plus, minus, or minus, plus. The only question is, where does the minus and the plus go? I'm going to try this first, minus and plus. Just a hunch. Could be wrong. What's that? Let's go with it. Let's go with it. Um, now, I'm looking for, the next thing is, factors of 7 and, oh, I'm sorry, factors of 7, which are just 7 and 1. Oh, I know, I know. John knows it. John, go. All right, if you put the 1 next to the 3, then you'll get negative 1x, because you have to times by the x next to it. Then if you put 7 over there, you have to times by the 3. So John, okay, negative. so... You're, you're right. John says, let's try 1 and 7. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 21x, minus 1 times x, which is just 1x, minus 7. Does that combine to give me a positive 20? Yeah. Yeah, it does, right? So those combine to give me a positive 20, and that's it. So um, that's what I'm saying. As you do more of these, you'll begin to see the pattern all right, so this one is 6x squared plus x minus 15. And the question is, can I take a monomial, or is there something I can take out of each term to begin with? It doesn't look like there's anything that I can factor out at the beginning here. So we're just going to deal with 6x squared plus, plus x minus 15. All right, so the next question, can I determine the leading coefficients of the factors? Um, well, here's my factors. Uh-oh. Here's my factors. I know I've got to have an x, but do I immediately know what my leading coefficients are? No, I don't. Can we just try some? What are factors of 6 that you might want to try? I like 2 and 3. Let's try 2 and 3. And in fact, I'm just going to write 3 and 2. Let's try it and see if it works. Now, there could be a lot of guess and checking that goes on here, right? Um, because what, is my, what do my signs have to be? Positive and negative. Positive and negative, um, but now it may not be positive, negative in that order, right? It could be negative, positive. Um, we're just going to try some stuff first. Factors of 15. Three and five. Okay. Where do you? What kind of order do you want? Wait, 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 wait. Five and then the three. Okay. All right, now, we've kind of guessed, we've kind of filled in all the blanks. Let's check, all right? This will give me, if I boil it back out, 6x squared. Let's see, minus 9x. Plus 10x. Plus 10x minus 15. Does that combine to give me a 1x? Remember, this is actually a 1 right here, right? Does that combine to give me a 1x? Yeah. Yeah, I think it does, right? So I think we won. That was pretty good. First time, first try. All right, 6x squared minus 14x plus 8. Can I factor a binomial out of each term? Is there something in each term that I can factor out? No. I beg to differ. Yes, there is. Let's factor a 2 out. I think that I can rewrite this as... 3x minus 7x. Oh, no, it disappeared. Okay, I think I can rewrite this as 2 times 3x squared. Let's see, minus 7x. Plus 4. How does that help? Good. How does that help me? Because now I know that I've got to have factors like this. Oh, 3 and 1. Right? Yeah. And my, that makes the question much simpler because my leading coefficients now have to be 3 and 1. Before, they could have been 6 and 1, could have been 3 and 2, could have been 2 and 3, or whatever. But now I know that my leading coefficients must be 3x and 1x. And that's, that's good. That's helpful. Um, I think. Now I can also check my signs right away. Um, my last, my C has a positive, uh, is a positive 4, so I can either multiply positive, positive, 
or negative negative. What do I know it has to be since I have a negative 7? Negative negative. negative negative. Good. Cool. Look at how much we've figured out just by using our reasoning skills and not using that stupid table from the book. Um, all right. Now, I got to think of factors of 4. 2 and 2, 4 and 1. What do you want to try? Uh, we want to put the 1, the 1 put the 4 next to the 3 and the 1 next to the 1. Okay. Like that? So we're going to try 4 and 1. Okay? If we, let's just foil out to check our answer. Not that we don't trust John, but we don't really trust John. Um, let's foil this out. This is going to be 2. We'll leave that alone. 3x squared minus the outer, which is 3x. Minus the inside, which is 4x, plus 4. Does that combine to give me a negative 7 in the middle? Yeah, yeah it does. And really, factoring the monomial out really helped us a lot. I, th I think it made it a lot easier. 9x squared minus 64. Well, I think that that's actually two perfect squares. If I rewrote that as 3x, squared. 3x that quantity squared, Minus 8 squared. I think that's a difference of squares, right? Um, noticing this, that in the place of A, I have 3x. And in the place of B, I have an 8. So I think then, this is actually, if I simplified it, would be whatever my A is. Looks like 3x. Plus my B. And minus my b, or minus my b and plus b, which is minus 8 and plus 8. And that factors, and those are my factors. And here's why this works. If I check my answer and foil this back out, this will give me 9x squared plus 24x minus 24x minus 64. Notice that the middle terms drop out. Okay, so that leaves me back at 9x squared minus 64. Each term... Yeah, let's take a 5 out of each term. So this is actually 5 times x squared minus nine. 9, right? Um, and this is actually then 5 times x squared minus, isn't this 3 squared? Yeah. So I'm right into one of those difference of squares um, Why situations. Why would we want to do that? Because it makes it a little bit simpler. When it's 5x minus 45, those are not perfect squares. 5 is not a perfect square. 45 is not a perfect square. Okay. Um, yeah, so 3 squared is the same as 9. Um, so, and if that's a perfect square, then I think this is the same as 5 times x minus 3, x plus 3. Is that right? Yeah. So factoring that monomial out once again helped us a lot. You should always ask yourself first, can I factor monomial out? Lots of them you won't be able to. But when you can, it is incredibly helpful. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is set this equal to 0. So that means I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, minus 4x, and I'm going to plus 5 to both sides. Okay? So I'm going to minus 4x and plus 5. Okay? So I'll be left with 5x squared. Negative 16 minus 4, I think, is negative 20x. 15 plus 5, I think, is 20. Number 9, though. Okay? And that all equals 0. Now, I'm going to go at this just like I did when I was factoring in all those examples before. Can I take a monomial out of every term? Yeah, what can I factor out of each term? A 5. Times x squared minus 4x minus 4. equals uh, two. zero. Okay. So now the question is, can I factor whatever is left? Yep. Yeah, I think I've got five times x. I know my leading coefficients are one and one. Five times, uh, let's see, x, what do we say? Negative two. I have a question. Negative two and two. Wait, no, negative oh, wait, wait. four and one. Negative Thank you. Hold on, it should be plus, right? Um, minus two, minus two. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, equals zero. So how many solutions will this one have? Infinite. What can I put in for x? It'll give me zero. 
2, right? Yeah, so my only solution on this one is x equals 2. Or dose. Yeah. x equals 2. That's because I'm good at it. <laughs>